Hey, hey guys, how are y'all doing? Well, I promised I would put out a video uh, explaining a little more of how I got here, how I started the homestead, uh, you know, just kind of how I put the cabin together and uh, water and sewer at the cabin. I'm 100% off grid, so stick around if you're new here. Um, I have a couple hundred videos out there of just uh, different things that I've been doing. I built most of this homestead before I started a YouTube channel. Um, I had the buildings more or less done, couldn't afford siding, that kind of stuff. So I bought a little sawmill and I've been using that. And over the last couple of years, I'm achieving slowly what I've done. So if you're catching up with me, uh, you know, I just finished up with the board and batten on the cabin uh, part of it. I still have the porch part to finish next year. Get that done. But if you stick around, I'm going to show you. I'm going to explain as much as I can without making the video too long. Um, my cabin, I live here 100% of the time, 100% off grid. I have no power lines coming in here, no gas lines coming in here, no telephone lines coming in here. But where I live, where I've chose to build this, I know the area. Um, I do have internet in the area. I have uh, good cell phone service where I live. Um, my acreage is big enough. Um, when this journey started for me, I got hurt in an accident, a trucking incident, a roll of stuff fell on me. So I got a lot of back injuries, neck injuries and uh, um, shortly thereafter, of course, divorce came and all that. And when you're on disability, you don't have a lot of income, so you work with what you got. Um, so some days might look like I work hard, but I might only get a half an hour of good hard working in and I have to shut her down. That's just the way my days go. And then, uh, of course, uh, those of you following me that watched the videos of me chopping my fingers and uh, all that good stuff that doesn't help things down this summer didn't get everything I wanted done but I did get the siding on I have a little bit of trim I'm gonna put up tomorrow uh, hopefully get that trim put up there that'll come down over the soffit and I'm happy that's the winter but so I'm gonna just explain just a few things here and and you can see my uh, foundation and stuff here I have a little bit of a rise in the in the ground I just kind of if you're back a little bit, a little easier. I got the solar panels up there, but I got a little rise in the ground. So I see a lot of people building cabins, building houses and stuff and digging and breaking their back and digging holes in the ground and putting pilings down. And uh, if the frost gets around those pilings, it'll freeze or your timbers. And when it freezes and thaws in the spring, there's still frost underneath and it will push your timbers even if there's no frost at the bottom of your timber. Um, many cabins have been built over the years out of logs and whatever houses. They never shifted that much and they were built by just taking the topsoil off and putting down either a treated wood foundation or cement foundation and start from there. And then it closes the sides in. You're gonna have a crawl space. I have a two and a half foot crawl space underneath of my cabin. Um, it's all wood frame uh, timbers that are treated, that go all the way around. And basically I build a two foot pony wall on top of the six inch timbers. And then I put the floor of the house on top of that. So it gives me a space where I can store potatoes downstairs, um, stuff like that, just to help keep them cool. Um, so I have tin. Uh, there are videos earlier this summer of me putting tin around it. Uh, I don't have a rodent problem, uh, but I just to, you know, be more sure of that, um, I put tin all the way around uh, before I put my board and batten on. So it's, it's closed up tight. Um, but I have a fully functional cabin. I have the power. Um, with batteries, I've got solar panels, as you can see behind me on the roof. I have a fully functional toilet, 
um, in this area. It's hard water. It's very lots of iron and lots of sodium in it, but the water table is quite high. So you can dig down. I got a 17 foot well. I put in a sand point. I actually put the sand point in and then I built the cabin over top of it. My well will never freeze. I'm pulling water with an RV pump. Um, a 12 volt RP, RV pump hooked to my batteries. It allows me to pull water. And so that gives me my water system. I have 10 acres here. It's square. So if you have a, a piece that big to have a, a pump out, you can have a pump out. It has to be in the middle of your property. So it's a little planning to make sure where you're going to build your cabin. You have to have your pump out so far from your cabin. But it has to be in the middle of the property. So I have a septic tank with a pump out here for those of you who are wondering. And uh, like I say, the foundation is all uh, wood with uh, tin all the way around the outside. Um, keep moisture out, keep rodents out, all that kind of stuff. I uh, do a little gardening here if you're just catching up with me. I got a fairly big greenhouse. Show you what we have. <coughs> Excuse me. I have an 18 by 26 greenhouse. I built it that way, A frame, and it the snow load will slide off of it really good. So just some of the things uh, I try to get some of my own vegetables and that kind of stuff. Now over there, there's a flag flying. That is my mill shed. Uh, if you go back through videos, you'll see that. I have wood storage here. That is my shop if you're off grid. Winter, I have a diesel truck. Normally stays in the garage. This year, I'm going to be parking my truck in the mill shed. I won't be driving it. I have a car, but it'll stay inside, so I never have to worry about plugging it in. Now, back to the cabin. I run on propane. Um, I have a full-size propane stove inside, and... Uh, you know, it's just uh, uh, like say uh, where that post is here, um, a sewer tank, and a line goes out out there to pump it out. Um, I have a nice row of wood. Uh, other videos you'll see around the property. Part of being off grid, it's it's not as hard as some people think, but it's not as easy as some people think. Uh, going off grid. A hundred percent. I've been off grid a hundred percent for eleven years. I'd be going on twelve. Um, so, just working on siding. I'll be doing some more work on the cabin next year. I'll be doing work on the shop, putting board and batten on those kind of things. Um, but I want to just take you inside quick, and we'll give you a quick look at uh, the outhouse situation, so to speak. Um, and kind of how I rigged it up. I mean, I'm telling you, I run my pump uh, off and uh, uh, just a regular three and a half gallon a minute RV pump and it runs just fine. It doesn't use much power. And with propane here, uh, I don't use hot water on demand. Um, I use a regular 40 gallon big around hot water tank, runs on propane. So, um that's that's my heating system for my showers and uh, hot water at the kitchen sink and that kind of thing so i've still got some work to do in the cabin but i really wanted to get the outside of it protected and then i'll be doing some cupboard building and different things in later videos down the road um, i don't want to drag this out too long but um, say finding a piece of property that has a water supply that you can use year round. I know a lot of people that, you know, find places uh, in the hills where there's a spring, they can run water in the summertime, the wintertime, it all freezes up and then they're down to hauling water. Uh, hauling water job is not a fun job. Um, it's kind of, it gets kind of old after a while. So uh, this water is not uh, uh, really drinkable, the taste and the iron, but I've had it tested a couple times and it is, uh, it's potable. I mean, uh, I boil my potatoes in it. I cook my macaroni or my spaghetti in it. If I'm making stew, I use other bottled water because your stuff you're cooking absorbs all the water. But uh, it's just that there's a lot of iron. 
um, and uh, uh, the testing guys tell me it's safe to drink. There's no E. coli or anything like that. So a uh, little bit of bottled water for drinking or some cooking and coffee, that's not that expensive. Um, and that's the way I run it. But I'll go in and we'll turn some lights on and I'll give you a quick little tour just to show you a little bit of the inside uh, that I've done um, work to, that I have more work to do. If you jump back a video or two, uh, I built deck on the back of the house here. I had to redo it after I tore the other one off uh, to put the siding on. And how I fill my wood box or jump back to my wood cutting videos I burn a lot of firewood, the shop and the house. Between the two of them, I use uh, pretty close to 14 cord, full cord every year. So, um, with my injured hand, it's uh, it gets cold very easy. So I probably won't be cutting wood when it's really cold this year. So it might not be a lot of wood cutting videos. Um, but you want to jump on back and check out there's uh, road trip videos there's camping videos there's fishing videos milling videos and i got rid of the animals that i had here um, i just had too much on the go and then i wanted to be gone a couple of times i just didn't have the time to look after them or get somebody to look after them so i'm down to just doing a little gardening on the homestead and uh, i like to get away and I just got a lot on the go. So we'll take you for a little quick tour and show you how I power the place. So after I chopped my fingers there with the saw, I had to putter around, just putter and do some things. So I tore all my flower beds out. That's a video in a little ways back, but I rebuilt and built it all out of log. But let's take a tour on inside. Just uh, keep the barbecue in the porch. I'm gonna redo put windows all next year I'm gonna make some changes and stuff but I run a full size uh, well it's a seven cubic foot freezer off the power system here and then uh, oh, just you know, I don't know how dark it's gonna be but and I've got a kitchen that I have to finish putting together I did start building cupboard and uh, I have to finish that Finish that stuff off, and uh, I'm going to do a finish on the walls on the inside yet. Not sure I'm going to put pine or something like that, but well, it's my work, my workstation. And uh, so this is a little dark here, but this is my, this is my wood box. You can kind of see there, it's uh, quite a few armloads of wood right close to the stove. And, uh, yeah, I guess the stove is a very efficient stove. So, this is a full-size tub, shower, flushable toilet, sink, and so there's propane hot water tank that's what heats my water for the kitchen and all that good stuff so we'll take a little tour at the back here and see how how uh, dark it is here it's pretty dark but this is but I want to get some finishing done on the walls but lots of room bedroom and we're going to take you out here to the washing laundry area washing area and the dark that's my uh, clothes hanging that's my clothes dryer so I have here I have a blue eddy running my power right now and it is attached to a b300k battery um yeah it's just about fully charged yet we had a little solar and 
And then I have an inverter here. This is what I was running before I started running the Blue Eddy and uh, the battery for power. So I have to keep this for backup. Um, down here I have shelves put in and I have three batteries on each shelf. So, you know, I'm running a dozen uh, gel batteries. That's what I ran for quite a few years. And uh, charge controller here and you've seen the solar panels on the roof comes into the charge controller goes to the batteries and right now I have the power split so it comes in and it actually splits and it goes some to the batteries and some straight to charging the blue eddy up so uh, yeah running a washing machine and being able to just go have a shower uh, watch TV and and my chair and so that's just a quick little tour of my off-grid cabin and if you have any questions that I haven't really covered topics or not sure because I maybe missed a few tips here and there along the way probably quite a few but you have any questions shoot me a message and uh I appreciate uh, all the thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video and you're going to see uh, some reviews and stuff coming out on power and uh, things like that that have helped the homestead out and got it rolling right along and so I am doing fairly well with uh, power and not using the generator hardly at all so uh, we got a couple of months here it's going to be darker colder and such maybe snowy and less sun so there's probably going to be days that i do have a uh, little power just have to go start the generator and uh, that's that's off grid so if you can't accept the fact that that's what you're going to have to do then you don't want to you don't want to go off grid uh, but there's a lot of people if they ask the right questions before you start building you can save yourself a lot of money. You can save yourself a lot of time. Um, a lot of steps that people take that are either unnecessary or or the, the cost, you know, once they get done, um, they find out that they can do it cheaper. So um, do your homework. If you're going to go off grid, definitely do your homework and talk to the right people and get little information that you uh, can take you a long way living a little freer life and fresh air and exercise. So you all enjoyed the video and we will catch you all again.